Happy Monday morning, everybody. Welcome. I'm glad you could join us. It is time to start our week off right like we should in God's word and prayer together as a family. Um, we can't do this life alone. We need each other. We need to be in God's word together. It's so important, and I'm glad that we can do this this morning together or at night or whenever you watch this. Um, we are going to be in Matthew chapter 13. A lot of times I'll either draw the scripture for this time from the, the weekend's readings or uh, from personal devotion time. Today we're going to be in like weekend reading type stuff. Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the sower. And um, uh, we're going to just touch on the fact of what a great sermon that was. If you if you didn't have a chance to be at worship this past weekend because of the holiday weekend, um, look it up online, go to our uh, YouTube page, RLC Family of Believers, and um, check out the uh, sermon for this past Sunday. It's a great one to talk about um, just the, the keep on farming thought, you know, like uh, uh, we, we see in the parable that uh, of the four soils, just one is one that bears fruit, but the sower just keeps sowing and he knows that he's going to not, you know, every seed isn't going to bear fruit, but you have to keep sowing the seed. You have to keep farming in order to see the crop and see the payoff and, and see what God's going to do. Um, and we also know that Jesus wasn't a hundred percent effective, um, uh, because this world is a sinful world and and uh, um, all, of all those types of reasons. So so if Jesus doesn't draw every single person to him, then we probably aren't either. And so we shouldn't be discouraged when we're reaching out with the gospel. And I love that, reaching out with the gospel. We have to do that. We have to pay attention and we have to keep on caring for others and giving people the opportunity to see what an awesome God that we have. Um, but also... Um, this scripture that we're going to read in a second here, I think is helpful to think in, an, in another way. Um, and in that way is, is how is our heart like these soils? So it's definitely outreach and, and the where the God's word lands um, will make a difference on how it is received and the Holy Spirit's actions. And, and we've got to keep on farming outwardly to share with others. For sure we need to do that. There's no but in that statement. We just have to be doing that. And I need to practice that too. Um, part of our outreach is also caring for our spiritual lives inwardly, too, so that we are in relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, when we're in a good relationship, we understand who we are and whose we are in Christ Jesus. Um, the outreach is much easier and makes much more sense, and we have something to reach out with. So we're going to read this parable again like we read this morning. I might skip past just some of the first ones because we know that um, it, was a, it was the daytime and and he went to sit by the lake, and so many people came. He went out in the boat to talk to them, um, to share the seed. He was throwing the seeds from the boat, right, the, the faith seeds. And uh, he talked to them in parables. And um, that's, that, that, we, that dawns something in my brain that might be a good devotion sometime is the use of parables. And, and it's confusing where Jesus wants us to share and, and go and baptize and tell and teach and and, and do all those things. And, and while he was on the earth, he taught in parables and parables for a reason, which is kind of a story type telling that doesn't just uh, automatically make sense. It's not completely intuitive. You have to kind of think at it a little bit. Um, and where does parables land and, and how we share the gospel? We're not going to get into that today, but that's just a thought that as, as we're getting into the scripture. Um, so here we are. Jesus is talking from the boat. He's speaking to them in parables. And uh, he s says this, um, starting at the uh, second half of verse 3. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant. Still other seeds fell on good soil, or produced a crop of 160 or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. I always find it interesting there at the end, the 160, 30, and then another telling another gospel, 30, 60, 100. And, and uh, the, the, the idea there is there's fruit, and even 30 times is a beautiful crop, um, 100 times almost unbelievable. So here we are, thus saith the Lord, right? And if you go um, 
just uh, listen to what the parable of the sower means. If you skip over to verse 18, many of you know that Jesus explains this parable. I just want to look at the beginning of chapter 13, verse 18 and 19. When anyone hears um, the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away like the, the seed on the path. Um, so what is a seed? When anyone hears a message about the kingdom, the message of the kingdom. And here we are. And pastors saying, keep farming, keep sending that seed, keep trying, keep keep uh, at the um, task of sharing the gospel with all the people around you, anybody that you can think of. And what I'd like you to think about today and this week, as you think about those people we need to share the gospel with, is why and what is the gospel in your life? What is the good news? What is Jesus' news of the kingdom? The fact that he is here, he is alive, he is in our lives. The kingdom of God has touched each one of us personally, and we are called to it and, and drawn to it. And, and one day we will fully see it face to face as Jesus recreates this earth perfect for us. A new kingdom, new heaven, new earth. Um, well, why? Why? And what do we think about it? And I, I wonder if the, the four soils reflects parts of our life. And maybe on the same day. And that's a crazy thing that we sometimes miss, I think, as people. is, is uh, We think as Christians, if we are not um, head over heels in love with Jesus and feel alive and vibrant in the Spirit every day of our lives, we are bad Christians. And I believe now that we've done quite a few of these devotions, these, some of these messages echo, and, and I think we've touched on this before. But we think we're bad Christians if we're not just on fire for Christ all the time. If we are not good soil producing a hundredfold um, fruit, uh, we are bad Christians. And that is absolutely, positively a message from Satan. It is. Um, do we want to be um, head over heels in love with God and producing fruit left and right? Um, always feeling like God is like right next to us and we have an active conversation with him. For sure we do. All of us would love to have that 100% of the time, but that's not the reality or the experience of real Christians. So if that's not your response or your reality, you are a real Christian. If you've experienced all four of these soils in your heart, in your life, you are a real Christian and Jesus loves you. Jesus is cultivating you. He is breaking up those soils and he is preparing you for the next thing. But we have to know what the desert is like. We have to know what the weeds are like. We have to understand that that's a part of our life in the sinful world and we can't get away from it. So let's look at these soils again. When the word of God comes into our lives, the pastor talked about sending it out and we have to do that. We absolutely have to do that. Um, and at the same time, can we also think about as we're sending, but also what it means in our lives. And I've talked to a lot of people. A lot of people have shared a lot of these different soils in their lives. And probably the other soils besides the most fertile soil um, are shared with me more often. Because that's when people are confused. Like, am, am, am I not supposed to be alive in Christ? And, and why do I just feel so blah? And blah, it's kind of a scary place to be as a Christian sometimes. I feel like, are you there, God? Hello? Hello, God, are you there? I don't feel you. God says, I'm right here all the time. Let's look at these soils. Going back to chapter 3. A farmer went out to sow the seeds. Sorry, chapter 13, verse 3. Sow the seeds. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. Let's start there. The path path is hard, the path is packed down, the seed cannot implant itself in the path, although weeds tend to be able to find a way to implant themselves everywhere. But in this seed, it's going to sit on top, and it's not going to go anywhere. And maybe in some ways that's the blah. Our faith just is sitting there. It's not doing anything. It doesn't seem alive and vibrant, and, and uh, are we missing something? It's just like we're sitting in the middle of a path. And in this path, it talks about, uh, it falls on the path and the birds came and ate it up. It's just sitting there. And I think a lot of times, and especially, um, I think for young people, but also adults, is when life is blah, and faith is blah, or boring, because they've decided it was. 
because they're not investing in it. And, and uh, maybe it's just because we're going through one of those blah spells where God is saying, trust me. But when it's blah or boring or, or so still, then the birds can snatch at our faith. And try to tear, take it away. Like, well, if God's not alive and active, maybe I should put my interests elsewhere, like hobbies or, or whatever. Have you ever been there? Are you there now? What happens to that seed? You know, in this parable, and this parable is not really talking about what we're talking about. I'm just using it because I think it connects, and God's word is so rich and so deep. I think it has something to speak in this area, but the actual original context is a bit different. But have you ever been in that place? In, this, in the parable, because we're not talking about this, the farmer doesn't go back and pick up each one of those seeds to put it somewhere else. Birds may come and peck and peek. And, and do you know what happens when birds eat seeds? A lot of times, plants are specifically designed for this. God's creation is designed for this, where a bird will come and grab a seed. You know what happens to that seed? Some of you may be answering, maybe no. But there's many seeds where they are meant to be eaten by birds. A lot of you know this. And go through the bird's digestive tract and come out of the bird's digestive tract, land somewhere that may be better, maybe a far away from the parent plant so that we don't have uh, too much going on in one spot. They can keep reaching out and growing in territory, these crazy plants, and they grow there. Are you in a blah moment? Do you feel like you're sitting in the belly of a bird? What's going on, God? I don't understand what's going on. Get ready. Because God's going to plant you. Now, that's, this is not the most um, exciting or maybe uh, alluring uh, parable or imagery going on here. I understand that. And we don't, we don't not want to think that we're, we're kind of going through bird poop. Um, but we all have these times where we just feel blah. And what's going on, God? And God's got a plan. And it may be a little bit more than we can understand now, but it's coming and he'll show us the way. The next soil. Some fell on rocky um, soil places where it did not have much soil it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow but when the sun came out the plants were scorched and they withered because there was no root we've had times like this i'm sure most of us have where we feel alive like yes this is what this is what faith should be this is what life with christ should be like we're on a mission trip or we're um, at a great uh, class or we're in nature, if that's our spot, or we're having a great devotion, we think, okay, everything's going to change now. Like, this is a, a turning point in my life, and everything's going to look different now. And we grow up quickly, but we didn't, um, we didn't attach that growth to something deeper, the deep rock foundation of Jesus Christ, but maybe more of a feeling or, or maybe a location or, uh, or a situation or a relationship. And all of a sudden, when that, those things get taken away, our faith feels like it's blah again, or it's dead, burnt out. Are you there now? Have you been there? It's a sad place to be, too, because it's so exciting when we're growing so fast. And then so sad when we feel like, was that nothing? Was that just pretend? Did I just imagine it? And we start questioning whether faith is real at all, and it is real. But our feelings are so deceptive. And when we start connecting our faith growth with all the things of this world, it will not last. There's another soil coming. But when the sun came up, it scorched it out. Other seeds fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. There's a lot of thorns these days. A lot of thorns. Some of those hobbies may be thorns. To kind of choke out our faith. Relationships where people don't care about God and, and they draw us away from God. And then we wonder why we feel so alone and choked out. And, and we go through struggles and we wonder, where is God? And we put many miles between him and us. Or at least it feels that way. Because God kept coming with us and he's right there to turn to. There are thorns in this life that I hate to even mention on a devotion because so many people struggle with them and they're so... 
kept secret. The sexual sins, the addiction sins, the sins that we don't want to talk about or admit that we have that can choke out our faith. The thorns are all over. Are you there? Have you been there? I bet we all have. Or I bet we all are. But Jesus says there is going to be times where it all comes together. And um, that is growth in faith. Where it lands on good soil and produces a crop 160 or 30 times. Now, you may feel like you're living on the path or living in the thorns or living in the rocks a lot more than you're living in the good soil. And sometimes you may think, well, I thought the rocks was the good soil because I grew so fast. And now I'm withering. Again, this parable is meant to address something else. So I think the rocks, as we are looking at it today, could also give us a taste of what Jesus can do. But remember, the rocks are when we attach it not to Christ and not to God, but we attach it to relationships or places or certain events. And those will always fail, even if they're awesome, like National Youth Gatherings, or Rochester Sermon Event, or, or trips to the Creation Museum, or, or um, excellent sermons or speakers. If we attach it to the people or the places or events, the rocks, the sun, the lack of soil will go away. But if we get to see that God can work and is working in our lives in that quick growth, but we land in good soil. Maybe the growth comes a little slower. Maybe a little more company around. But growth happens. And it bears fruit. And what is that fruit? Exactly what Pastor Coghlan was talking about this Sunday. Where we bear fruit, and that's what plants do. And they sow their seeds. At my parents' house, they've got a bunch of cottonwoods around them. My goodness, when cottonwoods are going, everything has cotton all over it. You open your mouth and you got cotton on your tongue. You've seen that. You see a field of dandelions, you go, oh my goodness, how many yards are going to get blessed by that crop? Even our crops that we try to control so tightly, we harvest them, we keep them in our silos and our barns and our, in our um, transportation to the, the market or whatever. But if you let them, they would seed too and they would spread their seeds. And that crop would bear 30, 60, 100 times. Our lives are complicated. You're not always going to feel super close to God. You're not always going to feel like every devotion, every one of these videos is just really hitting you where you need to be. And that's okay. You're not a bad Christian. You're not a bad person. Jesus loves you. He's shown it to you right now. Maybe the thorns are, are kind of choking it out. Maybe... The sun is scorching you. Maybe the path is, is holding you out of the dirt. But God's at work. God is at work in you. God has big plans. If today's, today's a blah day, come back at it tomorrow. Because down the road here, maybe short amount of time, maybe a long amount of time, the blah is going to change. Get ready for it because sometimes when it changes and God is active, we are not ready for that either. And that scares us too. We humans are finicky, but God loves you. He loves me. He loves us. He wants to grow us and nurture us and get rid of the weeds and give us deep soil and take us off the path so that we can sow the seeds of faith, the fruit that he has given and make, made us um, made alive in us. So let's pray and thank God for this wonderful gift that he grows in us and lets us share with others. Our cup overflows. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word that comes in our life that we can understand. And that, Lord, we pray that you prepare the soil, you cultivate our hearts so that our hearts are not hardened paths, our hearts are not full of weeds, our hearts are not attaching your great love to everything else in the world except you. Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> help us to be good soil so that when the crop and, and, and your work in us grows and bears fruit, Lord, we can give thanks and glory to you and that the fruit of, of your harvest can go out in the world, that, Lord, we can then take it and share it with others and spread the good news. Give us courage. Give us bravery. Prepare the hearts of those that we'll talk to. And let us be okay with not being 
let us be okay with resting in your arms. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Think about who you can share the words of God to. Think about where your heart is. And if your heart is one of those soils that don't feel too productive, your heart is feels like one of those soils that is, is just blah. Be patient. Wait on the Lord. For he has you and he will not forsake you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. Blessings. We'll see you next Monday.